expected chat uh, for sure and I know lots of you will not be expecting me to be on here but you can all watch it later so that's okay. Now I'm doing a massive big wholesale order so I thought while I'm doing it I might as well show you guys exactly how I actually make it. So first we're going to bloom all of the bicarb soda and then once I actually bloom it then I'm going to go to the next step and of course making the bath bombs. You definitely can make successful bath bombs. I know lots of people get really stressed because they can't do them um, but it's not hard. It just means you've got to have the right recipe. So anyway I'm just going to show you like I said how I'm going to be making this bicarbonate soda, um, blooming it and then of course making the bath bombs. Hello with some people I can see that you've logged on and I'm just doing an extra video today but anyone can watch it later on and it's about blooming um, you know your bath bomb bicarb and then of course we are going to be making some bath bombs. Oh hi from Perth, hi love. I usually do not come in midweek but or at the end of the week but I thought today I'm going to just show a few people because I've got to do a massive amount of bath bombs. I still have I think uh, over a thousand to make for um, a customer. So anyway why I'm doing them all I thought look I'll just actually show you what I'm doing and hopefully this can help some of you make successful bath bombs. So I'll show you a couple. Oh, Raywood Victoria. Hi, Suzanne. You see me on here. Like I said, I usually don't come on here, but for today I will. So we're going to make some successful bath bombs. These are my little clouds. And then I will actually show you how we even make, you know, a successful one. And I will also um, take you around the other side. I'm going to give you a little bit of a look um, before we do it. And hopefully this helps. So I'm sorry that you're going to have to look at my big head why we sort of get around to this side and I usually don't show this side but I thought this will sort of show everybody um these are some of my wholesale orders um and we're going to kind of got to go around to the other end and you know we're sort of I've actually um just boxed up uh 40 kilos of them so anyway I thought I would actually just show you so now let's get making and these are the ones we're doing right here so um, I will show you how I actually do them. So I'm just going to move a couple things around. And I'm sorry if my mixer looks dirty, but it's because I've actually just used it. Yeah, it is, Suzanne. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And this is what I say to everybody, you know, don't think that you can't do it. You can do it. Um, you know, when I started this, <laughs> I had no followers at all. So um, on anything, Instagram, whatever. So um you know that's the one thing i do want everyone to understand so when i actually make mine so we'll start with the blooming um for anyone that wants to know i'm oh, still learning bath bombs it's really hard but i'll give you my recipe and show you and hopefully that helps oh hello jackie how are you lorraine how are you too love oh i know it's unexpected i know but i thought i'm doing this and i was thinking maybe i can help somebody because I get a lot of questions about bath bombs. But honestly, it's very rare that I have a fail. You know, very rare on bath bombs. Um, so I'll give you my recipe and I'll talk about that as I go along. But the first thing to make, make a successful one is blooming it. And for those of you that don't know what it means, it basically just means you've got your bicarbonate soda. And then what you're going to do with that is we're going to add all of the dyes and so on in. And then that keeps that gorgeous colour. So if you want a colour like this, which is bright pink, you can do that. But one thing to remember about water-soluble dyes. Uh, thank you, Suzanne. Yeah, it is a great recipe and it's a no-fail one for me after many years. But the one thing that, um, you know, I'll say if you're doing a market, do remember water-soluble dyes lose their colour in the sun. So if you don't want them to lose their colour, just make sure um, that you actually add, um, you know, a mica because the mica will actually um, stop all of the colour going. So you'll still have some colour in it. But for me, you know, honestly, most of them sell quite good. And, you know, for the wholesale, a lot of these are in stores. So they're actually not going to be in the sun. They're actually in Westfield stores and so on. Or beauty, you know, that some are, um, what are they? In? I've got some in hairdressers, beauty salons um gift stores so just so many different sort uh you know sort of companies so anyway and most of those don't worry about the sun so all i have here is a cheap um stand mixer you do not need a fancy smancy kitchen aid for anyone asking i do not have any kitchen aid products 
although they are fantastic I just don't have them and I just don't want to pay for them so anyway this is just from my department store I think $70 or something it's noisy and crazy but you know who cares I mean it's going to bloom it so all we're going to do is have this here first and then I'll show you this which I haven't done it because I thought we'll wait to run camera so then you just got your mixing bowl and you do need a sieve as well oh hi Carol how are you I was just saying this is just an extra video because I'm making something for a customer. Now, my mixture, so that everyone knows, and I change it depending on the weather. In Australia, we're kind of going into a little bit of warmer weather. So the bicarbonate soda in this mixture, and you can halve it if you need to halve it, we are going to do 2,100 grams. It doesn't matter if you're a few over or under, it's not going to change it. And now that I've forgotten, let me just quickly get something so that I can actually open the bag. Uh, because I have a new bag here. So we'll move this over so I can show. So all of mine, um, I buy in wholesale now. Like obviously I buy in, you know, massive bulk. But you don't have to. You can just get bicarb from your shopping centre. And for anyone that wants to know, yes, bicarbonate soda has gone up a lot in price. Uh, it's huge, the price that it's gone up to. And after I actually uh, do mine, what I do is put it in these massive big pots. So I actually bloom 60 kilos in a go. But because I only have a small mixer, I can only do two kilos at a time. And um, that's basically what I'm blooming. So in here, we're just going to take this out and I've got my mixer to the side. So... Uh, sorry, not my mixer, my scale. So we're just going to measure all this out. And if you can see, my bicarb is very soft. No, I never stop, Carol. Um, look, I'm one of these people, honestly. I don't like to sit down. I hardly ever watch TV. It's really rare for me to watch TV. I actually honestly watch YouTube. Um, even movies on YouTube, you know, like I went on there the other day and I thought, oh, how lucky, Downton Abbey was on YouTube, because <laughs> so, uh, I love Downton Abbey. And, um, yeah, and so some bicarbonate sodas, honestly, are more like, they're sort of more grainy. This new one that I've got, which I'm getting from a company called N Essentials. Oh, I am like a little bunny. I am. You're right, Suzanne. Uh, so I get this one from N Essentials. And the good thing with N Essentials is they're a cosmetic grade company. So you can ask them lots of questions. If you're in Australia, they're in Australia. I'm not sure if they deliver elsewhere, but I'm sure there's lots of places in your country, whatever country you're from. And we're almost ready. So let me just show you what I'm doing now. So I've got my little sifter here. So let me just pop this down because you don't need to see me the whole time. So in here, I've just got my sifter. So we're just going to sift this. Um, please wear a mask when you're doing any of this. I know I don't have it, but it's I'm only just showing you. But after I'll show you, I will actually put a mask on. So in here, we've already put the bicarbonate soda. Okay, so now we're just going to pop that one aside. And what I do now is I have these tiny little bubsy jars. And all we're going to do is put the smallest bit of water-soluble dye in this. This one I'm making here is called Blooming Rose and you probably hear me talk about it. It's my most popular seller. So what I also do is put a little bit of mica and mica actually will create this colour because I've got that and I've got the water soluble dye. You need the water soluble dye to give you a pink bath. So if you want the bath to turn it, even though this looks bright coloured, in the bath this would just go a very dull, creamy, sort of light pink because um, mica doesn't give colour and I know that's probably what you're looking for. So all I'm going to do is just put a couple little bubsy spoons of this in here. This is like quarter of a teaspoon. So we've got that in here and now we do have our um, dyes. So if you see the dyes, you need hardly anything at all. So with the dye, all I do for this two kilo is use this quarter of a teaspoon. And we're just going to take a little bit just like that. And then we will just pop it in here. And what I do, so for every um, so for every quarter of teaspoon of this, I'm going to put two quarter teaspoons of water. Um, look, you can use tap water as well. You know, I usually use distilled water, but you can use tap water for a bath bomb. It's fine. 
The only thing is with tap water, some countries, you know, it won't be as pure. So that's why people use pure water. So, and I'm sorry, I forgot my water. So let me just find some and I'll just come back. See, I'm hopeless today, aren't I? All right, so I do have my gloves. So today, uh, it may be a little long video and I hope that's okay with everyone. But I thought I'll show you how to bloom and then I will also show you how I make the bath bomb. Um, you'll see lots and lots of people tapping the bath bomb and hitting it. You'll notice I don't hit it much at all. Because the more you tap, the more it gets ruined. What's the best for fragrance blending? So um, if you're doing a fragrance blend, you know like when you go on to uh, fragrance companies, on it it will say, you know, for candles. So it will say it's flashpoint. If you're going to blend, try and keep the flash point very, very similar. That, that would be my uh, biggest advice. So now, let me just, sorry, I'm going to just pop down this camera. I'm sorry if it's a bit wobbly. So here, we'll move all this out of the way because I have all different moulds. And I'll go and talk to you about moulds as well. I'll give you some advice on a couple little moulds. And I have to plug that in a second. So now I've just got my water, which I keep in this little thing here. So remember, we've got the little thing that we've already popped in. Um, some things in here as well so what we're also going to do is we're just going to add two little uh, ba baby spoons of this and that's it and it had a little bit of mica on it so that's why it's a bit crazy and this is all we're going to do just make sure that your water soluble dye is dissolved and you can see look that's like bright pink which is going to create this pink don't be tempted to put too much dye in because too much is not good you'll stain someone's bath and um, look, I have lots of people say, I don't want to use polysorbate 80 in the um, bath bomb. You must use it if you're using this dye. Otherwise, you will stain someone's bathtub. You'll ruin the bath. You'll ruin their towels and everything. So it's a disbursement of oils and dyes. So it's very important to use that. Um, if not, you need to write on all your bath bombs. My bath bomb will stain your bath uh, because you'll be sued if you don't do that. So that's super super important and i know that i sound like i'm a bit of an old mum saying that but um you don't want to be sued for something silly like that so in here like i said i've already added my little bit of mica and that's just because uh my particular um this particular one that i'm doing like i talk about this one all the time which is blooming rose um i make sure that everything is super consistent so that it's always the same so now we've got this in here and remember, there's nothing else just by carbonate soda. Do not add anything else but that in it because we're blooming. So in here, we're just going to pour it in and dip it in and just kind of do this to get every last little bit out. That way, every bath bomb you make will be the same because you don't want to be making one bath bomb one week and then another week you make a different bath bomb and, um, you know, like you make the same one but a different batch and they're not the same colour because your customers won't be happy. Especially me, now I'm getting people ordering a thousand bath bombs in a go. So, um, you know, for stores. So they don't want me to give 500 that are a little pink and 500 that are really pink. So really important. So, like I said, this is only a cheapo mixer. And it is definitely not top of the grade, but you know, who cares? And then we're going to turn it on. So it will get a little noisy. But as I said, I forgot to plug it in. God, I'm hopeless, aren't I? <laughs> I was telling myself I'm going to do this and, uh, you know, like I'm going to organise this in advance, but, you know, I forgot. <laughs> anyway, let's go. So we'll turn this on and you'll start to see. So just do it really slow at the start and you will see that it's going to slowly do its little bit. But don't, um, don't stress too much. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, Suzanne? So then... Just, you know, get your little spatula in between and just make sure all the colours are mixing in. And you will slowly start to see this work. And it does take time as well, so don't, um, don't hate yourself for it. And 
and this will go pink. I know it doesn't look like it, but it definitely will. So blooming means we just don't want a lot of liquids in this. And I will show you another one I've done. So this is another one here that's already been bloomed and you can see the color how it changes as well. And it will change depending what you put in it. So now I'm going to just take this up just so I can show you a little bit. So if you can start to see how it's starting to get its little pinky bit. But it will definitely get a little pinker as well as time goes on. And if you feel it's not pink enough, we can add another bit of dye in it. But just let it do its thing to start with because it's going to take a bit of time for it to, um, you know, see the result you want to see. So usually what you're going to do is you would be blooming this for about five minutes. And as I said, in between, just keep changing it. All right, so that is basically it. And what you can do, you can do this three, four days in advance as well. So I'm going to set that aside because I don't actually need this one right now. I've already made another one. Oh, hi, love. How are you? I said this is an extra video. I'm, I will actually uh, put this on later. Alright, so now this is the one, like I said, that I've already done. So we're going to just pop this one in here and now I will show you my recipe and what I do. So we'll pop that aside first. I do everything in this tiny little, um, like a measuring glass. Glass is really good because you can wash it out really nice and easy. So I will actually show you my recipe. Remember we've started with the bicarbonate soda. So we have 2,100 grams of bicarbonate soda in this one. And all my recipes, if you're asking, because lots of people say they change, they do. You may need to alter your recipe depending on the season because different seasons hold different moisture in the air. Also, I've just got um, a dehumidifier put in as well. So that does um, help things as well. So now, so I have my little, um, because we're going into winter as well, this is actually one teaspoon. So I put three... Uh, of these so three teaspoons and this oil I'm using is apricot kernel oil uh, you can use other oils apricot kernel is a is um quite a light oil so it leaves less fat in the bath that's why I like that one so I always put that then I put one teaspoon of jojoba oil in mine you can change this uh, lots of people ask me can they put coconut I'd say no yeah, humidity is bad. And I'll actually show you guys. I have this tiny baby little dehumidifier in. So, and this is fine. You want it to be like under 52. So, you know, like, and one of these like $2 from just your little cheapy sort of um, discount store. And I, if it's high or if it's raining or thunder, don't make bath bombs. They will fail. 100% they'll fail and then you'll be really sad. So, um, yeah, definitely do not do that, everybody. So now, also, we're going to be adding in our fragrance oil into this. So you need two tablespoons. Do make sure you check. Frangipani, in particular, is one of those funny ones that sometimes it cannot be used. And you'll probably notice I'm using a blend of two different ones, which is like a Victorian rose and a gardenia, because that is my blooming rose. Right, so we've got that. We're going to set this aside and we are also going to put one teaspoon of the Poly Sorbet 80 in. And this just disperses the colours and oils in the bath so that people don't slip. And um, it's something I strongly suggest you do. Uh, really do that because um, it covers you as well. So now, now that we've done that, there is one other thing we're going to do. So we've got our bath bomb mixture here. I have a baby sifter. Now, in the baby sifter, you need to add cream of tartar that will make your bath bomb hard and it will make it stick together. So, you know, you don't need a lot. So this is just the cream of tartar I use. It's just from my supermarket. I usually buy it in bulk, but everyone's sold out. And we want two tablespoons of this one in here. So we'll just add that because I didn't do two. So we've got two tablespoons. 
we're just going to shake this one around if you don't want to put SLSA, you don't need to put it in here. I'm also going to add one tablespoon of kaolin clay. So my kaolin clay, I just keep in little buckets in here as well. And always make sure you're sifting everything because if you don't, you'll get what's called little warts on bath bombs, which are little horrible, they look like pimples on the side. So this is definitely um, a good thing to do. And if you want to put SLSA, you can. For this whole mixture, I'm going to put like half a teaspoon. I don't put much at all because what happens if you put too much of this, the bath will, the bath will foam and it won't fizz good enough. So that's why. Uh, also, if you don't want to put that in, you can also put some milk powder. That will also give it a bit of foam. But um, most of my recipes are vegan, so... Um, that way it just is good for everybody. So now what we're going to do is we've got this here and we're just literally going to pop it inside. So we'll just put on, um, like I said, our, our little whip. So this one here is a paddle as well. So you need a paddle, not a whip. Because a whip will, will not do the same thing. Let me just pop this on. Without glasses, I'm a little blind. So all we're going to do is pour it straight in. Don't be precious about it too much. I just kind of put my finger in, just make sure I get as much as I can out. And um, and don't do it too high because it will just go everywhere and be crazy. So now I'll mix this around. We'll just bring it to the front so you can see a bit. And very slowly we're going to do it. And you will have noticed that I have not put citric acid in. We're not going to do that to the end. And as I said, you can bloom all this mixture in advance a couple days. So usually I spend one day doing like 150 kilos of blooming, uh, but you don't have to do that. But for me um, now, because I sell wholesale, uh, which I didn't before, but now I do. So we'll let that just mix for a minute. And then in my one, I've also got these little rose petals, which I'm going to put in. And each bath bomb, I'll show you in this bit here. We're going to add like only kind of that in one bath bomb. And when it goes in the bath, it will just sit on top and it will just be a little bit soft. It's more for decoration. It's not really going to add much to it. Um, so, you know, don't sort of think it's going to add heaps. It's not. So in between this, I just turn it off. You want to give it a mix because you want um, to make sure all of the liquid is getting mixed in the whole thing. Otherwise, you'll have wet spots on your bath bombs. And then they'll just, um, they'll just look not very nice. So we just want to make sure we're getting that. We'll turn it back on. This whole process about five minutes, but I'll kind of speed it up for you a little bit. Hopefully that I'm not boring you. actually done this so if you can see now how gorgeous that looks it looks really really nice so now the last thing which you would have noticed that I haven't added in this we have not put in our citric acid so what I do is I just give it a little bit of a turn over and why I'm weighing up the other citric acid I'm just going to leave this just to um you know, I'll leave this on low, so I'll just be like half a minute while I just weigh up the next one. And the citric acid, we want um, 1,050 grams to go in it as well. So I'm just going to weigh that bit up. So just tear out your scales. sure you're sifting um, everything so I'm actually sifting uh, the citric acid as well 
That will give you the best bath bomb and the smoothest one. So in here I have all my citric acid. So we'll just turn this off just for a minute. You don't even need to take it out. You can just pour it down the side. And don't worry how where it sits because we're going to mix this a few times. I usually just sort of push it around a bit. <coughs> we'll just zap this bit in here. Push it all down. And then we're going to slowly mix this. This bit doesn't need to be mixed much at all. And you'll be able to see, once you add citric acid, it changes the colour. So don't worry if your colour is not the way you want it because the citric acid will definitely change the, hue, the hues of the pinks or the blues, whatever you're using. Alright, so that's basically all we're going to do. And now I'm going to transfer this and then I'll show you the next bit. But for anyone that's having um, bath bomb issues, this is really important. This bit of blooming it, making it gorgeous, this is what is going to give you a massively successful bath bomb. Um, and I promise you, I promise it will be successful if you follow this. Uh, when I first started, I had disaster after disaster and I almost gave up. But honestly, for me, uh, I'd have to say maybe 80% of my sales are bath bombs. So it's a massive amount of sales. Um, and it changes some you know in winter I'll sell more candles um, but in summer it's definitely more bath bombs which is funny because you'd think less people would have a bath in summer and they'd have a shower but no they don't and don't worry if you've got things in here that you've noticed aren't mixing well because we're going to mix this too do wear gloves even if you're making it for yourself because the citric acid can actually give you a bit of a sting in your hand as well so now, there's one other thing that I use. I also do um, give this a bit of a zing um, with witch hazel. Witch hazel is just a plant-based product. It's better than water. You can use water, but I suggest you use witch hazel, which I think my container is almost empty, so I might have to just quickly, or just quickly get something and fill that up. Uh, anyone in Australia, this is what I'm actually using, which is from a company called Heirloom. It's just witch hazel, and I buy mine in five litres, but they do sell it, I think, in one litres or 500 grams. So we'll just fill up my little container, and I'll clean that bit in a minute. So hopefully I'm not boring you all, and, you can, and it's easy enough to follow. So now we're just going to give it two or three sprays and then just keep turning this in your hand a little bit. doesn't need heaps of turning, but now the one thing too that you will have noticed, a lot of people say wet sand is the texture. Uh, I don't agree with that. Wet sand is too wet. Uh, you know, a lot of um, bath bombs need to be drier because when they're too wet, they start to expand. They don't dry. My bath bomb, I can actually make this. Um, I can make this before lunch and then I can pack it after dinner. So I can do pack mine the same day. They don't, mine will be dry. Um, so that's just a little bit of a kind of example. And you want to see, that you, you know, if this is holding, you can see how that's a bit crumbly. So we'll just give it two more sprays. Uh, but don't give it more than five or six sprays for this mixture. You definitely don't need that. And you, if you do this and you see dyes coming streaking through, it means you haven't um, done it enough. So you just hold two pieces and sort of push it through your hands. You can see that's pretty clear. Um, and there's no dyes anywhere. So I know this is pretty good. And if you can see that is really um, powdery, it's not, um, it's not like wet sand at all. So now, now we're going to be on to the next bit. So for me, I weigh everything. So now this is the little mold I'm using here. Um, this one is um, from the Express Mold Company, which is in America. You can also use cater molds. I do use a lot of cater molds as well. 
um, but this is the one we're going to use for this because this is the one I use for all my wholesale. So when you're um, using ones like these, all you need to do is, you know, you've just got the main shaft, you're just going to pop the bottom in and then we're going to tear this out on the scale. So I've already torn this out, make sure it's dry as well. And then we're going to pop in the mixture. So I'm just going to pop this in. I want mine to weigh um, 130. So I've got to measure mine because all of mine are 130 grams. Right, so when you're doing 130, you just need to add a little bit more as well. Don't push it in tight because we don't want to do that yet. And then we're just going to be popping on the lid. Yeah, I always weigh every one of mine because you've got to remember if you're doing wholesale, um, and I'm doing it slow because I'm showing you, but usually it'd be really fast. Um, but, you know, you've got to remember when you're doing wholesale, they have to put a label on this. So they've got to make sure they're all the same. And in Australia, the laws are very, very strict. So, um, you know, if, if, they did it, if I did this wrong um, or didn't measure it up right, it, it's just not very good for them because it's just a big fat headache for them. So anyway, and now in here... Oh, I know, Christine, I just did a tricky live. It wasn't planned, but I'm making lots of bath bombs, so I thought I'll just um, show everyone. So now I do have my hand press. I don't use an electric one. I actually don't like them, so I'm not keen on them. And I just give it a press, but you can also press it by hand if you don't have one. It's no big deal. And then these are really handy because you just put that on top, and I'll show you. And then you're just going to push it up. Make sure you're holding this tight. Don't let go. So you can see my thumbs on that and, uh, you know, exactly as this. Just go around the outside. Now, this is the thing that I never knew. This little line you can see, this is what is going to give the satin ring. If there is no line and that and that are touching, it means there is no satin ring. So that is uh, really, really important. And I'm going to get one to show you. So this is my baby one that's in a pack. And if you can see, that is the satin ring on it. And the satin ring does look really cute. It is hard to keep that satin ring. It often drops off, but don't worry if it drops off. And then I'll show you this one, which is a much smaller satin ring. Um, but, you know, bath bombs are a tricky, tricky thing to do sometimes. So now, once we've got this here, what we're going to do is we're just going to tap it. So you can just tap it with the end of a knife. And if you notice, I'm not banging mine and I never hit the top and I never hit the bottom. If you hit the top and bottom, you can actually leave a bit of a mark on it. Oh, hello from Oklahoma. Yes, I did not explain um, what I, that I was coming on. I'm a bit tricky, aren't I? From New Jersey. Hi, lovey. Welcome. So now we've got our bath bomb. We're holding it tight on the top and bottom. And now we're just going to release it. Now, this is one thing I want to show you. Can you see how messy that looks on the top? And what that means is it just means that there's not enough um, stuff in it. So what you do is you just grab this, sprinkle it on top. And don't worry because this is only going to be, you know, like another gram or something. So it's fine with your weight. Sprinkle it on top. Push this back on. And once again, just, you know, hold it tight. Clean the edges off. Slowly just go like that. And then you can see it's pretty clean. So that is a trick. Uh, it's a bit of a troubleshooting um, trick. Or you can just tip it upside down and then we'll start again. And then, of course, you can see how gorgeous it is. But I'm not going to use that one because we want roses in mine. So, um, so now we'll start again. So we've got our bottom on here. For me, I add roses in all of mine. Oh, are you glad you made it? Thank you. Well, I, it wasn't planned. It, you know, I don't. I, every now and then I'll just do a sneaky one. So I just pop in my rose in the bottom um, because, like I said, this is my blooming rose one. And then we're going to um, just pop in this and make sure this measures around the 130. So I'm just going to weigh it. I'll just tip some off because there's too much in that. All right, so that's 133, which is good. So now we're going to pop the top on. Shake off the excess, just shake it back in here. We'll just, um, like I said, put it in the press. And then once it's in there, we'll just take it out through that. 
and like I said holding it tight that's the most important thing holding it tight just rub off the edge give it a little tap around the edge and you can see I'm spinning it with my hand as I'm doing it and you'll get really good at that I was hopeless at the start and now we will take the top off and if you can see how perfect it is and but if this was too wet it would stick and if it was too dry it would fall apart so that is a really um, important trick to sort of uh, do on there. Now, if you don't have the proper trays, and I'm going to tell you guys something, in Australia, we actually cannot get um, the big trays that you can get in America, the big drying trays. And I'm actually going to buy some from Canada. I looked into it today. Where did I get my press from? I use um, the X, it's called X Press, and Jason makes them, and uh, I think he's in the USA. But I'm in Australia, so I bought mine through Bath Bum World. Uh, and these ones, I think this mold that I'm using here, I think this is a 2.75 inch, um, which holds 130 grams. Actually, maybe it's a 2. No, actually, I think it's a 2.5 inch. Actually, this one. Um, but in Australia, we don't use inch. Uh, I don't know if he has an Etsy store, um, but check him out. Just it's called um, X. So the letter X. And then press p r e s s um there's lots of different versions but i've heard his is the best and i think his is the original one uh so that's why i use his so now let me get a tray and i'll show you what i do for people that don't have the trays now this is a bit of a trick if you see these here do you know what this is when you buy tennis balls and that from your, sh your local um department store they throw away these. So whenever they have them, I just say, can I have them? And I'll give them to you for free. Um, and then it fits perfectly, the bath bombs. So that's a bit of um, a cheapskate way. My husband laughs. He says, oh, God, you're so cheap, you know. <laughs> but um, And I'll try and um, do this because usually this would be on a flat surface, but I'm just holding it in front of you. So then all you're going to do when you tip it, you need to kind of keep your hand very lightly on the end. And then it will just tap in. And then there you go. And if you can see how gorgeous that looks, and then that's a perfect bath bomb. Uh, one thing too that I'll, I'll tell you is sometimes bath bombs can be quite tricky. So don't hate yourself if it's not working. Now I thought while I'm here, um, I'll see if I've got this one. This is a Kader mold. So I'll show you on this one as well. Kader, um, I buy quite a lot of theirs. I have, you know, the hearts. Oh, macaroon ones. Yeah, no, I haven't done any other ones. I do uh, mostly round round ones. Um, I do actually do a lot of donut ones. Clouds are very popular for me. I have a koala, a leaf. There's quite a few um, different ones as well. Like um, this is another one here as well. Yeah, they are tricky, but once you get used to making them, and this is the thing, even when you do wholesale, I see people wholesale these for a dollar. There's no way I'm doing it for a dollar. It's, it's really hard to do. So please don't sell yourself short and sell them, you know, really cheap. Don't do that. Because, you know, as you've seen, it's a lot of work and it's one of the hardest things in soaping to make is bath bombs. So, but alcohol can make it more tricky. I don't like alcohol at all. Like I wouldn't let my kids bath in it. So that's why I never used alcohol in mine. So, and now we've got Kader as well. I don't use cornstarch at all. That makes it too sticky. So um, take the cornstarch out and take the Epsom salts out. So don't put either of those in because that can make a fail. So, um, but I did give the recipe at the start. So if you just watch it back through, you'll see the recipe um, in it. But at the end, I will, at the end of this video, I'll give you a quick, I'll go through it again, just to give you um, a run through of what you need with the recipe. So now, like I said, we've got a cater mold. So you just got your plain shaft, the bottom, which you're going to pop in there. And this is a baby one. This is like 60 grams. So just put, you know, like a little bit, you know, you can have as many as you want. And like I said, these are dry um, rose petals. These are from a proper kitchen dried store. So don't just, well, I mean, you could dry them yourself. I don't know, but I don't do that. I make sure mine are from legitimate stores. So that way I'm not getting myself in trouble. And, you know, this is just a sample one. So I'll just show you. So here we've got this. And then we're just going to pop this on. Cater molds, you do not need a press to hold them. So you can just press it in your hand. 
you can see that that's really quite tight you can press it in here if you want like we'll give it a bit of a press but you can also just press it in your hand as well cater molds are a little more tricky uh you know i do say that they're more tricky and so you can just push them through to get them out but what i do is i just use this stick if you don't have one of these you can make this with a piece of dowel and a piece of wood just you know obviously drill out the hole and you can just super glue them together you don't need this fancy one this came with my mold that's the only reason i have it so i'm going to push that out make sure you're holding it tight never let go because then you otherwise it will crumble we'll just wipe the edge off so wipe all the crumbs off and once again we're just going to do this the only thing with cater mold is it does need a tiny tap on the ends uh, but the other one because it's a different fabric this resin one from jason is definitely the best one you can buy take off the top you can see how perfect it is and like i said this is a cute little baby one and then um, we'll take off that just to show you and look how cute that is and if you can tell you can see i'm holding this in my hand some bath molds you cannot hold in your hand they just fall apart so um yeah really really important and then um, i'm just going to pop it in my little tray which is just to the side as well so we'll just pop that although i did break it putting it into the tray <laughs> but um like i said these are the baby ones um and this is like about 60 you can do 50 or 60 grams in these ones here but I'm actually, I've actually got these tiny little boxes and my plan is to sell them in a gift box. So, um, and then, like I said, this is the cloud as well from Cater. And um, the cloud, I just put the little, um, you know, it's got little rose petals in here. But the same thing, but definitely clouds and things like that are much harder to um, use. So, like I said, I'll go through once again um, the recipe that why I'm talking and why I'm doing this at the same time and oh one thing i've got to tell you as well in between doing this just kind of lift up you know and just mix it back through every now and then just give it a bit of a mix so that it's not sitting there and you can see how dry this is so uh, oh one thing do not be tempted to keep spraying it with witch hazel because that will be a fail because you can see i'm holding it in my hand it's still holding itself um but you know you wouldn't want this to sit for an hour if you left this to sit for an hour it would be no good it would get too dry and it's just no good to use so that is the one thing too that um i say the color is gorgeous it is um i get all of my water soluble dyes uh from sud off in australia but i always mix a mica and a soluble dye because it will just give a more unique color that matches my business and honestly this is the most popular bath by myself um, as I said before, it's called Blooming Rose, um, and I do sell quite a lot of um, Blooming Rose. So let me just measure this out again, which is pretty perfect. So now, so when we're going to, we'll talk about the recipe again for people that missed out. So you need 2,100 grams of bicarbonate soda. Then what you're going to do is you are going to be mixing in your water and your dye that you would have pre-mixed. And all that is is quarter of a teaspoon of dye and, and half a teaspoon of water. Mix it all up and then you're going to bloom it. You can watch the front of this um, video if you didn't see that. And I'll show you how to actually bloom it as well. Then after you've done that, then you're going to be... So you've got all your uh, mixture and you'll have that inside your mixer here. Then you're going to um, mix it separately in a little container, which, are going to be, which will be your oils. And your oils are going to make be the wet portion of the recipe so in that you'll need two um so i'm using a teaspoon so you'll need two teaspoons of your fragrance oil please check that your fragrance oil is able to be used you'll also need uh yeah well, yeah that's right that is the right website yes uh so then you'll need one teaspoon of jojoba oil You'll need three teaspoons of apricot kernel oil. You can also use uh, sweet almond if you want, but I do suggest um, the apricot kernel. And so then they are your, you know, your oil base, as I said. Um, but do check. And then one teaspoon of the polysorbate 80, and that will disperse all your colours and everything so it doesn't stain things. And then on top of that, you do also need one uh, tablespoon of Caden clay, two tablespoons of cream of tartar so do not forget cream of tartar this is what makes your bath bomb hard and stops it falling apart 
and I actually send all of my um, products you know interstate in Australia to wholesale for wholesale customers and I've never once had a break so um you know but when you're sending things please put your biodegradable peanuts in the middle oh thank you thanks so much love that is lovely of you to say she's just saying um you know that i was kind and helpful and i do try and help so i really hope um that me giving away these things is is trying to help you and you know you're free to use this to sell in your own business as well Oh, yes, I do use, sorry, SLSA. I forgot to say that. I only use half a teaspoon of SLSA for this big mix as well. Oh, my favourite channel. You know, I've had lots of people say that, and I always say, I thought, I thought, look, if I get 50 people on this channel, I'm going to be excited. <laughs> so, you know, you got to laugh, don't you? And for anyone that's asking about my absolutely beautiful daddy, he uh, he's okay. He's okay at the moment. Um, you know, we're going back and forward. He is getting towards palliative care, but at the moment he's very happy. So I just thought I'd add that in. So I do get quite a few people asking how he's going and, and, um, yeah, he's doing fine. He enjoyed my knocky dinner last night. So that was nice. So, yeah. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, no. So anyone can watch this, um, back through so do make sure you watch it through if you need any more um help and you know always just message through youtube and i'm happy to give you some advice if there's something that you're struggling with but um so and the places i get my products all of my powdered ingredients are from n essentials in australia and then i get the uh, water soluble dyes from a company called sud off in australia and my fragrances uh, most of the fragrances come from pure candle supplies as well and they have the most beautiful roses and gardenias so if you want blooming sort of um ones or lavenders and things like that they have a lavender and ylang ylang that is just out of this world amazing so anyway and some of mine do have essential oils so if it's essential oils you're only going to be using half a teaspoon per this batch uh, so don't use the same amount if it's essential oils. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you think it's worthy, of course. And you will see me on the next video. Oh, and also, guys, make sure you go over, follow me on Instagram. Um, sorry, it's Nelson Interior Soapery on Instagram as well. I know lots of you guys follow me on there because I am buying lots of uh, presents this year for my family, only from small suppliers to try and keep the money in our, all of our little small businesses. Ah, oh, thanks, Carol. Anyway, I'll see you guys on Sunday. I'll be here for my Sunday chat. Bye for now.